We hear back from our original military commander, and we have apparently their office to go back to in the city, and we then decide to Batman to the ground. We can see the JJB level design philosophy of clutter in the environment, which tells an okay visual story of what the augment slum would look like. We get contacted by our doctor friend, as we need to see him to fix our augs, as he's under some sort of fire from someone. We get plenty of visual and audio cues of the police state in Prague, and this is all good atmospheric stuff. Street is off limits, Oyobok. Private function. All businesses are temporarily closed. Now, I'm no Czech or Russian language expert, but the term Uyobok is rather colorful and kind of extreme. So I can't say whether it's an appropriate level of language, of manners, but it seems to be tonally inconsistent, at least, from at least this character's level of emotion. Dokladi! Dokladi! Now here we get a distinctively Czech Papers Please scene, Dokladi, or Documents, uh, whether the this is the correct pronunciation, this is beyond my Canadian grammar, so I don't know. Now, this is the third Papers, Please scene so far in the game, and to me, this is just great stuff. The, the more of this kind of things, is that's what we want. We want to see what police states do in this scenario, and to take the Papers, Please scene and keep going with it is totally fine. This is all good atmosphere and world-building stuff. And because it's tied into the dialogue mechanic and the story, it works just fine. All OGs must now carry a supplementary permit authentication card. Do you have this card? And it seems this is an augmented Papers, Please scene. This is another simple hurdle for a clearly rendered police state scenario. I just wish the dialogue system was a bit more complex. So the document police guy tells us that he knows a guy who gets his get us this golden ticket style card which allow which would allow us to go anywhere we like. Now this is either an example of the bureaucratic corruption of the system as the police are trying to get citizens to spend more money or he's actually trying to be a nice guy here and wants Adam to be able to get around freely and possibly make both of their lives easier. This is a good way of introducing a subplot as we are now the questioning or questioning the motives of these characters or at least the plot here, if we use that term liberally, of this particular police character. Is this policeman a good guy, or is he just trying to mess with us and try to make some money for someone else? All right, give me the address. I think I'd like to see who's behind all this. Chikashka. That's an actual location, not a term of gratitude. Now, this is all good and true, but we're an augmented stealth cyborg, so we can just go dark and walk through everyone. So we get to the bookstore and it's being assaulted by who the heck knows. They're just shooting the place up. There's papers flying all over. We get to the real Deus Ex gameplay, which is duct crawling, of course. And we open a secret compartment. Luckily, the secret compartment door closes after we pass through it. And we go down an elevator to see Dr. Purple Rain Man. We learn there's a black market criminal organization called the Diwali, which the doctor has to go and see. Altar Botkoveli is the Diwali number two guy. The men outside, they were his men. But the big boss man is Radic Nikoladze. He is the number one guy. And I know Radic, so... So don't worry about it. Okay, so it sounds like we have a sub-boss and a potential main crime boss. So the story is progressing by giving us story notes and potential gameplay options in the future. And we sit in the chair. We need to get you in the chair. The chair. Don't be scared of the chair, okay? The chair is gentle. Go under, and then we come back up. There's a gameplay mechanic of turning on and off augs, and we discover we have more augs in us than we thought during the time we got rescued from the ending of human revolution. It is believed that someone implanted these things in us. The shit I found hidden inside you, spliced into your system like that, looks to me like it's from Mars, man! I'm pretty sure they're not from Mars. I never asked for upgrades from Mars. I mean, that neodymium shell. Who uses dimorphic magnetoreological fluid like that? Neodymium is atomic element 60, and its alloys are used as magnets. And it's the strongest permanent magnets we're familiar with. So a shell could be used to deflect, I don't know, metal projectiles possibly. Then there's magnetoreological fluids, and they're typically in washing machines and shock absorbers. Um, there's, they're essentially magnetically sensitive liquids. You take like, I don't know, like iron and you encase it in some sort of oil and it becomes a liquid and the more dense it becomes as you apply a magnetic field, it takes on the shape of the magnetic field. So the basic idea would be the form of, let's say, body armor or some sort of uh, metal piece, 
so it could like insulate from various kinds of kinetic energy. So you have this uh, liquid in your body or in your arm or whatnot, and you apply a magnetic field, and boom, all of a sudden, the iron or whatever dense material you have, that's a metal, that's magnetic, or at least responds to magnets, would then become more dense. Anyway, due to this reveal, we have a good reason to talk to Seraph about this, as he would be the first person to ask about what happened to our body in the months that we had to recover from the ending of the first game. Remember, that's a very big deal, because it did not explain a bloody thing of how we're still alive. Here, take some Praxis kits for the trouble. Praxis solves everything, keeps customers happy. For only $1 a kit, or $4 for 5 or $7 for 10 buy, buy, buy your Praxis kits today. There could be a way to optimize. It's just... It would involve getting something from Otar, a neuroplasticity calibrator. Okay, so now we potentially have three plot points, but they're not necessarily plot tickets. We're not being told or we have access to now go to them. So we have to talk to Seraph about our mystery augs, talk to Otar about getting a neuroplasticity calibrator, and we have to go back to our office with our military team and just go there. These specifically deal with our past, our main plot, and our potential new gameplay mechanic. This is actually pretty darn good development as far as meshing storytelling and gameplay, as well as trying to figure out what happened after the last game. That's a very good thing. The last game was kind of important. Since there's no save game import, we have to then start building that back up in some sort of explanation. And why not make it a mystery? Kudos to Deus Ex for doing that. I am not going to force you. I want you to want to do it. I want you to want to be an augmented god among men. Okay, so Mankind Divided might have just shown our, their uh, their full hand at this point, but we'll just say this uh, doctor just being very enthusiastic. So this is a bit out of context here, Mr. Rainman. Let's kind of tone it down a bit here. I don't mind helping this guy out if his problem you know, gets solved with us getting a neuroplasticity calibrator thing so that we can play the game at full capacity. But let's not try and turn into some Skynet ego trip here. If that sounds like something that interests you. There's pretty much no indication throughout the entire series that Adam wants to become a cyborg god. Nor is that sort of idea relevant here. This is just the Doctor getting excited. I mean, I'm sure some players would be curious. But there's better ways to introduce or incentivize a player to go the route of whatever it is they want us to do. Especially if it's purely optional. This is implied as a gameplay function, not necessarily as a part of the story feature or path that Adam is in some personal development goal. We still have that mystery of what happened to us in the past, and that's kind of important. Even though Adam technically feels different from after waking out of the chair, this says nothing of Adam's character developing uh, into anything, really. There has to be a stake or a purpose or some kind of motivation by Adam, which so far is only a sense of curiosity here. It's not acquiring power or becoming a cybernetic god or something like along those lines. Now, if it could be tied into his mission when he goes to the office, uh, or perhaps talking to Seraph about what happened, and if we have the choice of choosing or rejecting said upgrade, and then we tie that into Adam's personal state of being a cyborg god, if that's his intention now, now that he suddenly feels different because of his augments, then maybe, maybe we can see some decent conflict resolution and growth. But without that setup and connection to the main story, it's just a thing to do. It's just another gizmo on your bat belt. <laughs>